Morning folks, so today I'm going to tell you about uh, something I'm quite excited about and, um, and that's the wheels that I fitted to my M140i. Um, lightweight wheels was always something I wanted to do um, but I didn't really think I'd be able to afford or at least justify doing it because um, once you get up to sort of fairly wide 18 inch wheels and get them light they're quite expensive um, I'd always I'd always wanted a set of I think it was apex wheels I can't remember the the model number but they've got some gorgeous wheels I always fancied some of those um, the OZ ultra Legera's beautiful wheels I would love to set of those as well but they, they tend to be up around the 1500 pound mark maybe a little bit more in some cases which is really hard for, for me at least to justify um, when similar money buys you a diff, say, or um, some really proper suspension. So, something that's quite hard to justify, but something I wanted nonetheless. That was until, at least, um, I found out about some wheels made by Bowler, uh, and that's their, uh, their new FLB wheel. And excitingly, uh, it's a flow-formed wheel. So it's, uh, it's a process similar to that used by uh, Enki, their MAT process, um, used by Apex themselves, um, Koenig use, flow-forming, loads of companies use them. Most, an awful lot of lightweight track wheels will now be flow-formed as opposed to forged um, because it makes the product perhaps more um, better value for the customer. Uh, it's not as expensive as, as forging. Um, but it delivers a lot of the benefit. In terms of price, it sits maybe part way between casting and forging. In terms of the benefits, it's probably a little bit close to forging in terms of the strength and in particular the weight of the wheel. So flow forming, what is it? And I had to do a bit of research here myself as well because I had some idea of what it was, but not exactly. So what they do is they, they cast a wheel in a, in a narrower size than they want. Um, so this is a 18 by 8.5 so I don't know what they might cast maybe it'd be a 6 or something like that um, and then what they do is is under heat and pressure they spin the wheel and they actually stretch it um, and they turn it into a wider wheel and the process of heat and pressure changes the structure of the alloy and makes it an awful lot stronger so you get the lightweight from the fundamentally less material you've cast it in a in a narrower size but increased strength because of the pressure and the heat uh, changing the structure of the alloy so it's a, it's a bit of a win-win process um, and one that turns a, a cast wheel that would have normal strength and weight properties into something that's much more uh, performance orientated so it's a brand new design from Bowler the FLB and to me it's gone under the radar a little bit I think this is going to become a really really popular wheel um, for track and road enthusiasts alike. I mean, we, we all understand the, the theory of a lighter wheel is, uh, is reducing unsprung and rotational mass. So there are only benefits, basically. Um, so we all want lighter wheels, uh, and the uh, barrier to it is normally the cost. Uh, in this case, I think I'm right in saying that the recommended retail price is £720 for the four wheels. Um, there's 180 each at least, so uh, do the maths, I think it's 720. But that makes them a very, very competitively priced wheel. And basically what I'd expect to pay for a reasonable quality uh, cast wheel. So um, compared to some of the other wheels that I've mentioned, they're probably about half the price. Uh, and they're pretty much identical in terms of weight. And you'd expect from the, the process and the fact that they're manufactured in very, very similar facilities, especially to the likes of uh, VMR and Apex, uh, you'd expect the wheel to be of a comparable quality. Okay, so I went for a, an 18 by 8.5 square setup. Uh, at the rear I've used uh, an ET45 offset and at the front a 40. Um, I've also used a 3mm spacer on my car to clear the slightly greater radius um, shock bodies on the coilovers that I'm using. So, importantly, the weight. Uh, in the size that I've chosen, uh, which is larger than the standard 8 and 7.5 inch width wheels that are on the M140i, uh, they weigh in at 8.3 kilos each, which is very, very light. 
Um, for reference, the, the standard wheels weigh 10.8 kilos at the front and 11 kilos at the rear. So you're upsizing to a, an 8.5 and you're still saving in excess of 10 kilograms of unsprung and rotational mass. So that is a huge win. Of course, you're also upsizing, so you've got more wheel for your tire. Um, I use a 235 at the front on the road and a 265 at the rear. Um, that's kind of led by availability of tyres as much as it is my ultimate choice. Um, I feel like ideal for the road for me would probably be maybe a 235 front, 255 rear. Um, and at the track, I think ultimately I would choose a 245 front and 265 rear, something like that. So yeah, we, there's a huge saving over, over the stock wheels. Um, before these wheels, I was using the BMW OEM 441 M wheels, which are also an 8.5 rim. Uh, so they give a really good baseline for comparison. I was using the same tyres, uh, same size, but just a BMW rim, uh, with a spacer on one of the wheels to, to get the right offset. So including tyres, um, the 441 M's weigh 23.2, and 24 kilos respectively front and rear and the bowlers weigh in at 20.3 and 20.6 kilos respectively so that's a huge weight saving over all four corners including the spacers I've saved 12.2 kilos across all four, four corners of the car which is just a massive saving and for the cost of 720 pounds is, is pretty damn reasonable so how does it drive on the lighter wheels um, we all know that uh, there are benefits in terms of acceleration, braking, corn, everything basically improves with lower weight uh, wheels reducing unsprung mass, reducing rotational mass. So technically, in theory, and almost certainly in practice, the car is a little bit faster accelerating, um, at the threshold it will brake slightly better and um, it will corner slightly better. Um, I'm not equipped with the uh, sensitivity to detect these changes, they will be very small percentage wise. But what I can tell you is the car feels lighter, um, the steering weight has decreased, there is a little bit more feel, <laughs> I hasten to add it's a small amount more feel purely because of the somewhat poor um, steering design on the BMWs. It's, um, you don't get the feel of an old hydraulic rack. I mean, it has its benefits, but you just don't get the feel. So we've got a little bit more coming through the wheel. Um, it feels lighter. Um, it's a difficult thing to describe. It just feels more on its, on its toes. It just feels more alive. Um, it's the sort of feeling that I've experienced in other cars before by changing the wheel size for something smaller. Um, so on the MX-5s we often change down to a 13 inch wheel for the track so that we can use a, a basically a cheaper tyre. Uh, we use um, part worn slicks that we get very cheaply uh, and it feels kind of like that. The car just feels more alive, more pointy, more on its toes. And one other thing I've noticed is over the, um, the very, very common, very poor roads around here, in fact I'm on one now, um, the car just reacts a little bit quicker. Um, so I guess the the shocks and the springs are trying to control fundamentally less weight and so it's easier for them to do their job. Um, so that's that's actually one of the biggest benefits I've felt uh, along with it just coming to life a little bit more. So Bowler was a company I'd, I'd heard of before um, but I associated with them with making sort of a, a mid-range wheel. Uh, they had some really nice designs, in fact they had a bit of a cross-spoke design um, in perhaps the last generation that I really, really liked and would have quite liked for this, this car. Um, but they're sort of in that mid-range and I'd always considered them to be, to be about there. Now, the FLB sort of moves them um, up in my eyes. It, it makes them more of a, a premium proposition. So these wheels, the FLB wheels, they're manufactured in, in Taiwan. Um, a, lot of, a lot of lightweight wheels, a lot of wheels full stop are made in China and Taiwan. Um, but they're made in Taiwan, I think as are, I think I'm right to say VR, VMR wheels are made in Taiwan, I think Apex wheels are made in Taiwan or China. Um, so a lot of these sorts of companies are, are using the now excellent manufacturing in, in the Far East. Um, and of course the process being what it is, you still get a very high quality wheel. Um, what Bowler do, and I think I'm right in saying the other companies do as well to ensure the quality, 
is that they have their wheels, uh, I think it's called VIA certified, it's a Japanese destruction testing um, and it just ensures the quality is right and that they are a thoroughly safe wheel. Um, so yeah, you, you, you might be put off by a wheel that's manufactured in the Far East, or by that I mean China and Taiwan as opposed to Japan. Um, but you know the certification is there, the destruction testing is there, uh, and in in the case of a flow formed wheel in particular, I have absolutely zero hesitation about a wheel manufactured there. Um, I just consider it a way of, of having a, a lower price product of a similar quality. Uh, one other thing about the FLBs, I've done my research on these <laughs> when the, there wasn't much about on them, so I, I went to to great lengths to try and get as much information from Bowler as possible because I kind of feel like they've not been, um, I don't think it's fair to say that they've not been marketed properly but people just don't know about them and, and I think they're an excellent wheel for, for track goers and, and car enthusiasts. Um, so they've actually gone to great lengths to ensure that the brake clearance is as good as possible and I don't have any evidence of them fitting over certain certain brakes or anything on, on the standard brakes and would never anticipate any problem with an 18-inch 18, 18 wheel but I suspect it's fairly likely that they'll be right up there in terms of uh, wheels for really good brake clearance and I'd certainly use them uh, on other track cars where I, where I needed good clearance and good lightweight wheel. So in summary I've ended up with a great looking in my opinion wheel that sort of has something of the ultra Leggera about it, something of the uh, CE28 uh, raised vault wheel as well, it's really nice um, and more importantly it's strong, it's light another bonus, if I need to replace a wheel, if I hit a massive pothole or if I hit a curb at the track and damage a wheel, you know, even the strongest wheels get damaged um, they're a sensible price to replace and of course they're nice and cheap to buy in the first place so um, in my opinion an absolute performance bargain Well, if you've made it this far thank you ever so much for watching um, if you have enjoyed it please hit the like button um, consider giving us a subscription as well every subscription helps we're trying to grow the channel as always and and reach as many people as we can with our with our hobby and our passion um, we don't monetize any of the videos it's purely done to share what we enjoy doing in terms of what's to come on the channel uh, we've got the continuation of this series in the 140 um, in fact, let me know what you want to see most on this channel um, for the 140. Uh, we've got some videos to come on the suspension, uh, which is a, an important big one. Um, brakes and similar importance. So if you've got a preference out of those two, which one you want to see next, let me know. We've also got videos coming up around um, my winter tyre setup, my summer tyre choice. And then some of the smaller mods I've done to the car, so the interior stuff that I've done, um, some of the coding, uh, little things that are very important in my opinion, which uh, which every M140 I own I should do. Um, and then outside of that we've got Will's excellent S2000 um, coverage, the stuff he does on track and developing that car. Uh, he's got a foray into racing coming this year, so that will be extremely exciting. We've got his M135i that's developing into a really good road car. Then we've got the stuff that I do with the ITV MX-5 on track. The MX-2000 will see a resurrection this year. Um, and of course the little CRX, I've not forgotten about that. There'll be some more work going on on that this, this year. So uh, if, if you're enjoying what we're doing, subscribe to us and uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the comments.